It's now 4.30 on WKYT this morning. Three people rushed to the hospital overnight after police say a driver flipped their car on I-75. We're tracking a violent robbery this morning near a busy Lexington intersection. Police say one person was shot last night. And the latest as the number of deaths in New York City Legionnaire's disease outbreak is continuing to rise now. Seven people affected. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in to WKYT This Morning as we get this new day off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get a first check of the weather right now with Micah. And we're looking at one lone thunderstorm down toward the southeast and we're going to be holding on to that for at least another hour or so and then it moves off into Tennessee. So we're really not going to be affected by that uh, for the most part. Pineville will see some rain out of this, already seeing some rain, but Middlesbrough heads up. You're next in line in about 15 to about 30 minutes. You'll be seeing this roll right through you guys in downtown Middlesbrough. Temperatures are there in the upper 60s, lower 70s. It's not a bad feel outside, but you are feeling that humidity creep up just ever so slightly, and that gives enough of that moisture outside. Put out some more thunderstorms again today. Some will see it, some will not, just like yesterday with temperatures around 87. We'll get into that latest forecast coming up. Micah, thank you. We'll see you shortly. We're tracking a developing story out of Pulaski County this morning. That's where an almost 12-hour-long standoff with a wanted man has just ended within the hour. Police tell us they went to arrest the man around 4.30 yesterday afternoon in an apartment building on Sycamore Street, but he would not come out. They say he was wanted for terroristic threatening. As a precaution, Somerset Police evacuated everyone living in that apartment building. Officers were still on scene, and the suspect has been arrested. His name or charges have not yet been released. And this morning, Lexington police are trying to find the people behind a violent robbery that injured three people. Police say one of the victims was shot. Happened around 7 last night near some businesses at the intersection of North Limestone and East New Circle. WKYT's Garrett Weimer is tracking the investigation for us this morning. Police say a man was shot in the shoulder inside his car after he was robbed behind the CVS pharmacy here on the corner of Limestone and East New Circle. The man was taken to the hospital, but police say he should be okay. Two other people suffered minor injuries during the robbery. I'm not clear on the relationship between the suspects and victims at the time. Again, that's something that's probably going to come out in the investigation once investigators get to talk to all parties involved. Police say witnesses described the shooting suspect as a black man in his late teens or early 20s with short black hair and wearing all black. They say he got into an SUV driven by another man with dreadlocks that took off onto New Circle. Police said they hoped surveillance footage from the CVS here would help give them a better idea of what exactly happened and who those suspects are. Uh, we're also attempting to contact with witnesses who may have seen the incident take place so we can piece together this investigation. After the shooting, police say the victims tried to get away too, but their car was damaged and they only made it as far as the Renta Center parking lot next door. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. New this morning, three people are recovering after a crash on I-75 in Lexington last night. That happened about 11:30 near exit 104. Police say the driver flipped the car after driving too close to the edge of the road. The driver and two passengers were taken to UK hospital with minor injuries. That crash is still under investigation this morning. Well, today, students in Johnson County will begin a new school year. It comes three weeks after flash flooding devastated some communities there. The floods forced many families in the Flat Gap area out of their homes. Last night, Flat Gap Elementary School held an open house to welcome back the students. And as Monique Blair tells us, school leaders hope this new year will bring some normalcy to students after these rough few weeks. You've got your first homework assignment tonight, okay? The halls of Flat Gap Elementary are quiet now, but by 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, students will flood the halls. We're just working to do the best we can to, to make sure that they have a normal school year. This first day of school comes three weeks after a flood devastated the county, destroying many of the children's homes who attend the school. Of the little more than 300 students who will attend Flat Gap Elementary this year, 20 students lost everything they had, and another 40 students were indirectly affected by July's flood. They might not have lost their entire home. Water may have been in their home, or they had a roadway washed out or a driveway washed out. 
uh, vehicles washed away. Now Principal Robert Yant says the school staff is focusing on making sure the students feel as normal as possible as they work to get back on their feet. They can be around their friends, they can be around their teachers, they can be around those of us adults who they were used to being around before this happened. They are going to have science lab four days a week mm -hmm. and that's going to be with Mrs. Smith. Yount says an outpouring of donations was able to provide all affected students with the necessary school supplies and also other items they need at home. And throughout the devastation, Yount says the children are maintaining upbeat attitudes. This is their home. It's where they want to be. They want to be with their families, with their community. Everybody's really positive about it, and we're just trying to, to help keep that positive attitude for them. In Johnson County, Monique Blair, WKYT. And Principal Yance says a centralized fund that will go directly to all affected students and their families has been set up at the central office. A vacation turned frightening for a northern Kentucky family. They say a man robbed them in their cabin on Lake Cumberland. Happened early Sunday morning in a cabin in Wayne County. Carl Mays says the robber got in through an unlocked door, then attacked and tied up his sister in a bedroom. The family says the man stole money and prescription drugs and ran off. We were targeted. I honestly believe we were targeted because they knew specifically who they, the, the man specifically knew who to go after what he wanted because he passed up the first floor bedrooms. Well, May says his sister was treated and released from the hospital. The family says they have stayed in the same cabin for more than 20 years and have never had a problem before. Police say they have a good description of the robber, but they're not releasing it because they fear it could harm the investigation. Coming up on 437 on WKYT this morning, the man accused of killing a Memphis, Tennessee police officer is behind bars. Police say Tremaine Wilburn turned himself in to federal authorities yesterday afternoon. His family was with him at the time. Police have charged Wilburn with murder. They say he shot Memphis police officer Sean Bolton during a traffic stop on Saturday night. Actress Amy Schumer calling for a crackdown on gun violence, and she's joining her cousin, Senator Chuck Schumer, in New York City. This comes after the recent movie theater shooting in Louisiana. The senator unveiled new legislation which rewards states when they implement background checks. Amy Schumer says she was devastated by the shooting, which took place in a theater playing her most recent film. My heart goes out to Jillian and Macy, to the survivors, to the families, and everyone who is tied to this tragic, senseless, and horrifying actions of this man who shouldn't have been able to put his hands on a gun in the first place. I'm not sure why this man chose my movie to end these two beautiful lives and injure nine others, but it was very personal for me. The shooter killed two people in the movie theater in that shooting in Lafayette and then injured nine others before taking his own life. We are tracking a health alert right now out of New York this morning. That's where seven people have died after an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. The disease is a severe form of pneumonia. It's contracted after patients inhale a mist containing the bacteria. Officials have found the bacteria in five cooling towers in the South Bronx. All of those have now been disinfected. A town hall meeting was held yesterday to help people avoid contracting the bacteria. This morning, an unusual flyer is targeting drug dealers in Franklin County, and it's getting some attention on Facebook. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office posted this flyer online yesterday. It reads, quote, attention, drug dealers. Is your drug dealing competition costing you money? He goes on to ask for names and information on competing drug dealers so that they can be turned into the sheriff's office. The sheriff says it is a lighthearted way to get tips on a tough problem. Uh, we've got our community engaged. People are looking at it, they're talking about it, and you know, if we can get a good tip and get a good drug dealer off the street, um, all the more. Sheriff Pat Melton says he decided to post the flyer on Facebook after seeing a similar post from a sheriff's office in Georgia. This morning, the search continues for a camper who disappeared in Wolf County over the weekend. Family members say 31-year-old Josh Atkins of Richmond took off from Coomer Ridge Campground Saturday night just before his family was supposed to leave. They say Atkins suffers from a mental illness. More than a dozen agencies have helped with the search, but they haven't been able to find him yet. It's good to have you along on WKYT this morning. We're rolling toward 440 on your Tuesday, and more news is on the way. Well, it may be too early to think about the end of summer. It's not too early for a before-school checkup with a doctor. Moms Every Day has more on that coming up.
And from some of those storms yesterday, we still have a flash flood warning in effect for portions over in eastern Kentucky. We'll talk about that and if we can add more rain to it coming up in just a few minutes.